All right, now let's turn our attention to looking at factoring trinomials where the first term has a coefficient other than 1. So we'll be factoring things like 3x squared plus something or other. It's that 3 that causes, a, causes us a bit of, of uh, grief. It's not grief, a bit of work. So to do these, there's basically two ways that I've seen in any books uh, uh, to factor them. The first one, they call it the FOIL method. Basically, it's a guess and check way. This is the way that I was uh, taught and that I've done for a long time, and it, it seems to work well, but it, there's like this guessing and checking means there's always a little bit of work to it. Then there's another method I've seen in some other books called the AC method. It's more of a systematic approach to uh, um, factoring. Um, I quite like this one because uh, you come up with the answer bang on. If you do the steps correctly, bang, you have your factors, and there's no guessing uh, about it. I'm going to show you both methods, though, just so you can get an idea of how to do each one of them. And actually, when I do questions, um, uh, it often depends on the question whether I'll do the guess and check method or whether I'll do uh, the AC method. Okay, so the FOIL method, or guess and check one, just says to take a look at the first term and the last term. Because I know when I am factoring this, that my, um, when I factor this, in order to get this 10x squared, it's going to be whatever's in front here, and whatever's in front there is going to give it to me. So I need to find things that multiply to 10x squared. So like I've done down here, I could have 2x and 5x, or I could have had 10x and x. Those would be two things that would multiply to 10x squared. Okay, so I just plug those in. Then I look at the last number, the minus 12, and look for factors of minus 12. So in this case, I plugged in a plus 3 and a minus 4, but I could have put in a, my, a minus 6 and a plus 2 because they multiply to 12 as well. Okay, so once I've sort of guessed the numbers that I, I throw in there, then I check it. So I multiply it through. So 2x times 5x, 10x squared. 2x times minus 4, minus 8x. 3 times 5, 15x. 3 times minus 4, minus 12. Now when I check this, notice that the first term and the last term are correct. It's the only, the only term that I'm really checking on is the middle term. So I take a look at these two. Minus 8 plus 15 gives me positive 7x. And if I look up here, in this case, woo, I guessed it correctly. Um, and so it came out to the 7x. If it does, then I know that this is the proper, proper factorization of the, uh, the original expression. So it's a guess and check thing. Notice if I'd have done it this way, I'd have got 10x squared, of course. Then I'd had plus 12x, minus 6x, and then minus 12. Notice the last term and the first term are correct. But when I go 12 minus 6, I get a plus 6x, not a 7x. Therefore, this way is wrong. So that's why what I mean by guess and check. Let's just try one. Here's one here. 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. So I, I'm guessing. So out front here, to get 3x squared, I'd have to have a 3x here and an x there. To get an 8, I don't know, maybe a, um, a, a plus 2 and a minus 4. Let's try that. So 3x squared, yeah. This would be a plus 6x minus 4x. That would be a plus 2x. That's not 10. Ah, so i gotta do, I got to fix that. Got to try another one. I fortunately have an eraser here. I guess you'll have an eraser too. But let me try something else. Maybe why don't I, I swap the order of those? Why don't I put, say, a plus 4 here and a minus 2 there? Uh, 3x squared, of course. Uh, this would be plus 12x minus 2. Hey, that's plus 10. And minus 2 times 4 is, is minus 8. That's the correct one. So that's what I mean by guessing and checking. Not a bad method, and with a question like this one, I probably could do that one just by guessing and, and uh, uh, checking.
This next question, I won't do the whole thing, but notice that uh, each of them have an extra or a bunch of X's in there. And so with this one, I'd have to do a common factor first. So I'd take a 2X cubed out, be left with a 10X squared minus 23X uh, plus 12. So I'd factor that out first. Then I do my guess and check with that. One thing that I don't like to guess and check with much is when I get numbers here that have multiple options. Like here, 3x squared, it had to be a 3x and an x. But if I have 10x squared, it could be 5 and 2 or 10 and 1. And even worse, if I get a number like 12. So I could get 12 and 1, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. There's just lots of options. And if there's lots of options, then, yeah, you can try, guess, and check, but you might be there a while. Um, however, if you have lots of options, then something like the AC method uh, comes into play, where it, it helps you de determine the answer right off. A little bit more work, but it works well, too. Let me show you how to do it. So what you do is, you um, it's called the AC method. Remember, uh, the general formula looks like this. So there's something I have to do with the A and the C. So what I do is I multiply them. So 4 times minus 3 is a minus 12. And the middle term here is a 4. So what I want to do is I want to get two numbers, find two numbers, that multiply to that product, to AC, multiply to this, and add to 4. So two things that multiply to negative 12 and add to 4. Well, uh, minus 3 and 4, those multiply. But when you add them, that gives you plus 1. No, that's not right. Um, how about, uh, 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 how about uh, minus 6 times a positive 2? Minus 6 times 2, that's minus 12. Minus 6 plus 2, oh, that's a minus 4. I need a plus 4. But I'm close. So I can go a 6 and a minus 2. Those multiply to a minus 12. And 6 plus minus 2 is a positive 4. That's my baby. Now, similarly to what we did before, the, we're looking for a combination of two numbers. But different to what we did before, I don't just plug those into factors and I'm done. What I do is I replace the middle term, that's this one, with those two numbers. So I go 4x squared, and instead of going plus 4x, I'm going to put these two in there. So I'm going to have plus 6x uh, minus 2x minus 3. Okay, so these two numbers, all, the, all this work here, all it did was gave me the two middle numbers right there. Now I do group factoring, like we did in a, a session or two before. So I'm going to take these first two terms and look for a common factor. I'm going to take the last two terms, look for a common factor. So out of the first two, I think I can take a 2x out, and I'll be left with 2x plus 3. Hopefully that's right. Yeah, that's right. Out of the next ones, I can't take anything. There's a minus sign here, so I'm going to take a minus 1 out. Remember, we have to take at least a 1 out. If it's minus, we'll take a minus 1 out. So if I divide each term by a minus 1, this becomes a positive 2x. This becomes a positive 3. Almost done. Now, um, when I look at group factoring, what has to happen is this, whatever's in this bracket here, must match exactly this bracket. Has to be exact. If it's not, you've done something wrong, go back and look for sign changes or, or mistakes you've made there. If they are identical, then I can proceed. Because this term here has a 2x plus 3 in it, and this term here has a 2x plus 3 in it. So I can factor that 2x plus 3 out, and if I factor it out, I'm, not, I'm left with 2x and a minus 1. And here is the factorization of this original expression. Notice there's no real guessing and checking involved. Like here, I, I, I had to just work to find some numbers. But once I had those numbers, it was a systematic process uh, to come to the end. 
again, it's always a good idea to to foil things out at the end to make sure that uh, you come up with the same polynomial. It's always a good practice to do that. Uh, let me maybe do that. This will be 4x squared minus 2x plus 6x minus 3. The first term and the last term, of course, are correct. The middle two, minus 2 plus 6, does give me plus 4. So I know that that factorization is uh, correct. Okay, so that that's using the AC method. Maybe I'll just do one more one more example for you, um, and then uh, then you can try some uh, also on your own. Uh, let's try this one down here. This one looks a little nastier. Uh, let me just move it up a little bit. Okay, so I've got ten y. Oh, there's a bunch of y's here. Let's get rid of some y's right off the bat. So ten y squared minus seven y minus 12. Okay, so I multiply the first and the last term, a times c, that's minus 120. And now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to a minus 120 that add to a minus 7. Oh, great. How about minus 12 and 10? That gives me a minus 2. That's not right. Um, 15. How many times will 15 go into there? Um, let's see, 15 times, is it 8? 8, 40, yeah, that's right, 15 times 8. So how about a minus 15 and a plus 8, because I have to get a minus 20? Minus 15 plus 8 gives me a minus 7. Hey, there's my answer. So I leave my y squared out front, and then in here, maybe I'll put a square bracket there, I have 10y squared, and I replace the middle term with whatever I got here. Minus 15y plus 8y minus 12. Okay, we'll keep going here. So y squared. Now I'd group factor. So out of these first two, I can take a 5y. And I'd be left with 2y minus 3. Out of these ones, I can take uh, 4 out of those two, so a plus 4, and I'd be left with 2y minus 3. Oh, I'm liking this is the same as this. This is good news. So, um, out front there, I can factor out a 2y minus 3, and I'm left with 5y plus 4. So here now are my factors of the original polynomial. Notice it's just a, a systematic way of doing things. Uh, you look at um, you look at this uh, expression here. Multiply the first times the last. Find two numbers that multiply to that number and add to the middle term. Once you find them, you can't just throw them in a bracket, but you take those and replace this middle term with those two numbers, and then you group factor, ensuring that this. Um, and this, what you factored out there, are e exactly the same. And then group factor and you come out to your answer. Okay, again, uh, like I said in the last Scribblecast, uh, factoring a key thing. So I would practice and practice and practice uh, factoring and make sure you can do that uh, in your sleep. Again, questions, give me a holler.